All right. So we've got a hell of a rot vise here. It's going to clean up the marks where it hit. Smooth it up a little bit. And we'll lightly paint it with a hammer. like that. All the painting does is compress the metal on the surface a little bit, puts a little surface tension back in it. And it'll help stop cracks from materializing in that spot. So, and yeah, we got that one done. Now we got two things I got to work on this side. I'm going to go ahead and cut this side a little bit too, just while I'm here. And this one here needs to be trimmed away right on the tip a little bit. And we'll do the same pinning trick. So we'll just knock this down right through here. I couldn't really see exactly how much I need to cut, but how am I going to hold this? Don't squeeze it here. Are you going to open up the inside of the rod where the other rod Yes. Oh, okay. So right now I'm hitting right here and right over here, so it's being held. It's not really hurting the rod any in strength wise. I'm just going to take this and knock this area down. You can also deburr it slightly if you want. sharp edge helps a little bit too. Cracks don't like to start on such sharp ones, dull edges. You're good. If you feel sharp, do it some more. See how it feels dull over there right now? Feel this side and feel the bottom. Oh, yeah. Big difference. Yeah. So you can paint this a little bit if you want. And just leave it and leave it. Too hard, you more damage in your help. So, super important. So there's the after, and there's what the before looks like. So now my finger is all the way across, no sharp edges over here. Got lots of sharp edges, especially right across here. So we can get rid of those. We do the same thing on this one, even though I don't need it for clearance. We'll go ahead and just detail the rod out, make it like the other one.
one's all down there. And I went around the back side over here too. You can go in there and deburr it and polish and do all kinds of fancy crap if you want to. These you don't break there. They either split right here or they break right through here. It's usually where they break. Rarely would they break on the beam. <clears throat> but they'll break right in here. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and do some grinding right now. They will break here. So we're going to go ahead and put this grinder right in here and grind the pistol out of this thing right here. Now see how this one's pretty big? We need to square it up more. So instead of be at this angle, we'll go grind that like that and grind it away. That way the whole corner right there will drop. But try not to make the rod thinner through here. You don't want to make the cross section thinner. You want to keep it as thick as you can. deeper up inside, not where I cut it. I need to cut further up inside. Not deep enough. And this rod's flatter, so I need a smaller cutter in there. I go in one of these thin ones. And make it more squarish in here, which will help too, because the rod's actually flat shaped. It's not round. So this will allow me to be a little bit deeper. But this here, at least I've radiated up into here, so now that's not a real sharp edge right there now. I still got to come here deburred a little bit. So now I'm going to concentrate on cutting further up inside. I'm going to use a squaring one here and make it more flat looking. See, I cut this side, and see, I just highlighted the high spot on the other one. See the highlight in there? So I'm going to blend it in just like I did on that side. That should give me the clearance I want. And so I'm not trying to go any wider, just deeper down. Oops. 
Squirt it up a little bit. See it's now more flatter. Trying to get this down to a closer number down here. I didn't bring my measuring stick, so I don't know exactly where I'm at. I go grab my scale. I look up in there and see where I'm hitting now. now. It looks like I'm hitting more right here in the corner, right up in the front here now. Is where the most of the contact is. This one looks like we got more clearance on this side. So most of the clearance issues on this side, so I'll cut this side a little bit more over here. So this side's more squarished off, and this is more round probably. So I'll cut more on this side. Hello. I'm trying to. I'm in the middle of doing something. To help you with. Uh, if I knew what length it was you needed, I'd probably have something. I know you just have to bring a sampler and know what length you want and what thread it is. They vary, so I don't can't tell you what you have. Good luck on that. <laughs> yeah, you got finer core thread, and how long you want? You want two inches? Or you want eight inches? I need a length. I don't know. Okay, well that narrows down half the bolts out there. Now I just need to know what what you need. If you know what length you need, that's all that matters. Get some kind of measure, maybe a lot easier, because I don't know what your application is. But anyway, I have a lot of bolts here. Okay, bye. Deeper on that side, maybe. You cut the spot that's hit and you don't gain much. So we're down about three and three quarter now. We gained three eighths of an inch at least of closing, which is probably enough to do what we need to do. But if I can figure out exactly where we're hitting at. on the outside edge here now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go cut too much more though. We've got quite a bit we're taking off.
All right, so reduce the edges a little bit there. Not much, just a little bit. Should get a little closer. Looking more even. About three and five eighths, maybe right now. I think I'm hitting up here in the midpoint, right up in here, right now. Somewhere up in that area. Just do the tick more right there. Got more of a curve going. I think I'll make it more flat. It's a lot of meat there in the middle area. So cutting ones from here to here. <clears throat> you have to really put on the bearings to really tell exactly what you got, but you kind of eyeball the center hole here. It's hard to kind of do that, but and we're definitely in five eighths area, but it's hard to hold the rod straight when I'm measuring it. Next thing you do, you mark with a little felt tip and you can tell where you're at, hitting on it for sure. Kind of guessing right now. I'm back hitting it right here in this corner right here again. Yeah, about three and nine sixteenths maybe. Okay, I'm gonna go clean this all up, do a mock-up, see where we're really at. It's probably enough, but we'll double check. Okay, I got the rods over here assembled. I'm hitting up inside in there. You can see the gap right here on the edge, so that means I hit further up in there. So I gotta get more clearance. I found my uh, paperwork from 20 years ago because this big stack of crap here don't have anything important in it anymore. These are the old instructions that actually tell you something. These are from 92. Revised 93. Here, find that sheet. That's when it tells you something. So this tells you how to modify things and work on Harleys if you're actually doing your own work. Instead of the new way of doing shit, buy all new stuff. It tells you how to do your cutting, your clearances. Got some notes in here. See, notes. There you go, read those. Be quick. Here's some breather modifications. Nobody does that anymore. Now you just put a reed breather in there to take care of that problem. So, yeah, look at all that nice stuff. Anyway, here's what I'm doing right here. So, I told you it was around three inches, but it's not center line because there's no way to get down that low. It was on the edge of the hole. So, this one here I lost about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. Probably lost about three sixteenths of my center dimension when I was, when I was holding it. But uh, over here, get where I can see it, edge of the hole to the edge of the hole over about 3.050. And they want to be a 2.950, but that's for like 5 inch stroke. 
we got plenty of room already, but I'm going to go in here, find where the high spot is, knock that down. This will close up another 100,000 in a heartbeat. I've already got most all the other stuff done. So this comes out of my toolbox where it belongs instead of over here in the overflow section. That hauls all the piston crap and push rods and lifter crap nobody cares about. Actually doing real work is over there. So we're just going to take our pin here. Mark this thing up a little bit in here. 2 anyway. This marker only does so much. It's hitting pretty deep up in there, so I don't think this is going to do much, but we'll try it. Now if you do that, it'll, it'll mark the rod up like we did before here, but I know it's not hitting here, it's hitting up inside, that's why I did it like that. And I didn't think it was going to leave a mark, I could actually see anything in there. Nope. Well, I know it's hitting up here, fairly deep up in here from here on up, so I'm going to go and just open that area up in there. We'll be back. Okay, so there's our rod. See now we're getting real close to sitting inside there like it should now. It's still not digging in the uh, the beam like it was stock. It's hitting pretty equal though, but now it doesn't have that big gap like it was like that now. So now when you measure it, we need a 2,950. And see we're at 2,850 right now. So we're 100 thou, I wonder what we needed. We got the bad spot out of there. So now you can see how it looks in there. Got a good radius in there. It's nice and smooth. Feels nice and even with your finger going in there. No sharp edges at all. Unlike the stock when it's really rough. So the rod's really thick through here, so you're not really weakening any by doing this. The only place you're going to weaken is on the side of the beam right here if you start cutting in the sides. You can see how we didn't cut in the sides at all. So that's the key. Alright, so now this is going to get up to a 5 inch stroke. Actually it's probably more like 5 and 8 stroke because we need deeper. Not that we need that. Hitting. Did, it pop? Okay. Did you hear it pop? Yeah. When you find the roller that sticks out, it goes down a lot easier. Don't put no lubrication on those things, huh? Until later. It's mock up. Oh. We're not hitting on the rod there no more. Actually, that's not the side we're hitting on. We're hitting on the left side. I wonder it's not hitting there no more. We're on the wrong side of the bike. Well, it looked good. I wonder how good this one is. I've got some short skirts on those pistonies. Now they got a stroker motor. hitting on this side is the one I was hitting on. No more contact. Yeah. I don't know if you can see in there. I know I can't. Uh, hold it when I get to it, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely not hitting. <clears throat> Pretty close. 
Okay, now I can go chew this up. I need to tighten it up a little bit. The truing. A little extra work. Slam her back together. Check some stuff. Alright, we'll be back on this one.